twas the night before Christmas, and the barracks were loud. There were music and cheers, it was quite a crowd, but it all came to a stop when the knights heard a knock. The evil wizard was here, he stole the king's gem. The wizard flew away, and the king called his men. But the knights didn't move, they were stunned as a log, bellies too full of that festive eggnog. The king was desperate, he needed his gem back, how else could he fill up his big present sack? The elf heard the king's call, and went on his way, to retrieve the king's gem, and save Christmas day. So to celebrate Christmas, I wanted to see if we could beat Castle Crashes using only snowballs. And of course, this challenge wouldn't be complete without Pelter. So getting straight into the run, we went through Barbarian War and came across the War Machine. Now with it being this early into the game, we don't have a lot of magic. That means our snowballs aren't doing a lot of damage and we can't throw too many. But with the War Machine being the first boss of Castle Crashes, it wasn't too difficult to bring down. One problem we'll run into during this challenge run is deciding where to put our skill points, as we want to level up our magic to increase our damage and throw more snowballs. But at the same time, the further we get into the game, the more damage the enemies will do, and not having any defense will make it a lot harder. But right now, this wasn't an issue as we went into the Barbarian boss fight. Now having projectile magic is great for this boss, as from a distance, the Barbarian boss can't really do much. So all I had to do was keep my distance and keep throwing throwing snowballs, and just like that, the second boss was down. Now snowballs are not great for cutting things, meaning we couldn't cut down the red princess. So this is now the second challenge run we will have to leave her behind. We soon moved into Thieves Forest where we came across the Troll Mother. Since we could only damage one enemy at a time, and had limited snowballs, areas that were very dense with enemies were challenging and the Troll Mother went to prove that. Since there were so many trolls, we couldn't really kill them, as the Troll Mother would just spawn more. This resulted in us having to run around the area to try and avoid the many, many trolls. And if we were lucky, get a snowball that hit the Troll Mother. We were also able to jump over the trolls and throw a snowball, which would most likely hit the Troll Mother since she's a lot taller. But overall, we just had to keep moving since we could easily get stun knocked in a large group. And after a challenging third boss, we were chased through the old mill and landed in the river below, and thank god the river wasn't frozen. Now the river was awkward, since the bats killed us if we rode the debris, meaning the best way to defeat the bats was by jumping out the water and throwing our snowballs, but at the same time, we couldn't defeat the fish while in the water, meaning we had to ride the debris. This made it very difficult having to balance being on debris and being in the water, but soon enough we made it onto the fourth boss, that being the catfish. Now unlike the Bomorni run, we could actually to destroy the catfish's fur bowl, meaning we could do this boss like normal. The only issue was, we could throw 5 snowballs per magic bar, meaning there was just a lot of waiting around. But apart from needing patience, the boss itself was extremely easy since we could block almost every attack. But after a long time, the catfish went down and we finished the level with a whopping 78 XP. And that's another issue for this challenge run. XP works in castle crashes based on the number of hits you do to enemies. Meaning the more hits you do, the more XP you get. Since our build is high damage, we aren't getting many hits on the enemies. Meaning we are barely getting any XP. Which just further adds to the problem of having to decide between magic and defense for our skill points. But ignoring that dilemma for now, the next boss was the bear. Since the bear's a normal sized enemy, every snowball we threw knocked him over. But since we can never have a fair fight, there were also three other bears we had to avoid. And also, Rami. I swear, whenever I use Rami, he's never this good. But we really had to wrap this fight up. Since it was raining, there was a good chance our snowballs could melt. But luckily, we could find shelter in Pee Pee Straddle's cave. And in the cave, it seemed Pee Pee brought his family over for Christmas. And these bats were a real issue. But Pee Pee was quick to discipline his kids and get them off of me. It seems Pee Pee ate too many pigs in blankets. The knights eventually caught up, but it seems the eggnog hadn't worn off since they didn't really do anything. And after delivering the knights, the king had to return back in order to wrap the presents for Christmas. King? King? Oh my god. I... Excuse me? Where's he going? It's the other way. Uh, uh, okay then. Oh. <laughs> we moved on to the groom boss fight, and someone needs to tell the groom that we're throwing snowballs, not bombs. 
you'll be going on Santa's naughty list this year. We rode a knockoff Santa's sled and they don't really look like reindeers. But for the parade section of the game, I stood at the back of the carriage so as I was throwing snowballs, any thieves that would spawn would automatically be hit. This also kept me safe as it prevented the thieves from spawning behind me, which was a problem in the last challenge run. But the new problem in this challenge run is the lack of defense as I did die on this section and had to redo it a second time. But on our second attempt, the giant troll was defeated and we can move on to the Cyclops boss fight. And once again, someone needs to tell these bosses that we're throwing snowballs. But for the Cyclops boss fight, it once again wasn't too bad as the damage windows are quite generous. So all we had to do was dodge in and out of attacks, throwing our snowballs when possible. And after a lot of snowballs, I think the Cyclops got a little cooled as he dipped in the lava to warm up. He'll be okay, right? But for the second princess, we once again couldn't save her, meaning we had to back out and leave her behind. But I'm sure she can fit through that cage, I mean genuinely there's nothing holding her back here. Next was Lava World and we didn't want to spend a long time here, as our snowballs could melt. But on our first attempt, we did get instantly killed by the skeletons, meaning we had to rerun the area a second time. And on our second attempt, we made it to the volcano boss fight where we actually learned something pretty interesting. So to damage the volcano, you need to be beefy. Regular attacks and magic do no damage. But whilst in beefy mode, Pelter snowballs actually can damage the volcano. So given enough time and enough sandwiches, Pelter could solo the volcano boss, which might have just given me a future video idea. And for the second boss of Lava World, the dragon is a little awkward when it comes to projectiles. Despite the dragon's size, the hitbox for projectiles is pretty small, meaning we had to stand in a very specific position in order to do damage. And after testing out different methods, we did find a position which made us safe from the falling border and damage the dragon. The only annoyance was the fire demon. But upon killing the fire demon, there is a small window to which you can damage the dragon before the next fire demon spawns. So we repeated this pattern until the dragon was defeated. Next was the industrial machine and this was quite interesting. So normally, the five pillars in the middle are the easy part of the boss, with the fingers and turret being harder since they're above fire grids. But since we were limited to only throwable magic, it meant defeating the fingers was extremely easy since it couldn't really get close to us. But the pillars in the middle were difficult since we only had limited snowballs per magic bar it meant we didn't have enough burst damage to destroy them so we had to go through multiple cycles until we could destroy all five pillars and for the turret we simply just had to dodge in and out of attacks throwing a snowball when possible eventually the industrial machine was destroyed and my chat once again decided the fate of the industrial prince and it must have been a christmas miracle as the first time ever my chat voted in majority for the industrial prince to live so this truly was a christmas miracle in fact i was so moved that i went across the ocean and visited the desert to show them some christmas love as i imagine they don't get much snow but after showing them what snow to the face feels like i think the aliens wanted to try some too so i also showed the aliens how to do a snowball fight although i don't think they fully understood it but i was invited onto their ship to have a full-blown snowball fight except they their snowballs hurt a little bit more. I think the snowball fight got a bit out of hand. But after showing the locals in the desert the fun of snowball fights, they decided to show me what they do for fun. So we had a game of beach volleyball which I ended up winning 10-0, but Pelter didn't seem to understand that we'd won. Next was the marsh and the only real issue in this area was the second troll mother. Once again, it was simply down to there just being a lot of enemies. But at this point in the game, we had a lot more magic, meaning we can throw more snowballs and do more damage. But that didn't really matter for the corn boss fight since it has 4000 HP. So for the corn boss fight, I actually got these two civilians here to help me on the fight. I stood far back throwing my snowballs which kept me safe and out of range of the corn's attacks. And the civilians, they just took the damage. And after a very, very long time, 
the calm boss was defeated. Next was Medusa's lair and there's a lot of water in this level. Walking through water will reduce your movement speed so my best option for attack was to jump in the air and throw my snowballs downwards. But soon enough we made it to the Medusa boss fight which wasn't too bad. If you stand next to Medusa her only real attack is this one snake in her hair. It will try and melee you but it can be blocked with a shield and the damage windows for this are very generous. So we simply just stood next to Medusa Medusa, throwing our snowballs until she was turned to stone. We moved on to Full Moon, which has three beefy stove faces, but they actually weren't an issue for this, since projectile magic is a great way of dealing with beefies. So after defeating all three beefies, we moved on to Ladder Strat, but for the first time ever, Ladder Strat couldn't help us here. Since we could only damage one enemy at a time, there was no point in grouping all the enemies together, meaning it was a lot more effective to just run around in circles and target one enemy. But it's okay, because I could finally have a real snowball fight. In Snow World, the Ice Gimmel know how to do it, although I was a little outnumbered. They even had Pelter's long lost cousin, but we eventually moved on to the Frost King which is very similar to the Calm Boss. The fight itself isn't difficult, it just takes a painfully long time. The Frost King teleports all over the arena, meaning you have very short damage windows. Combine that with a slippery floor and you've got yourself a long boss fight. But having range was a real saving grace, since all we had to worry about was being in line with the Frost King which slightly increased our damage windows. On top of that, when the Frost King teleported, it actually gave us a good chance to recharge our magic. So in the end, the Frost King wasn't a bad boss. Maybe I'm still salty from the no hit run. And for the third princess, we once again could not save her. But unlike the red princess, the green and blue could easily escape. I mean, that gap is big enough for both of them. But after not saving the third princess, we could move on to the final stage of the game. Now I was worried. Cult minions have a 100% damage resistance to elements, and if I learn anything from my bomb only run, then this could be the worst part of the challenge. I'm talking about spending hours on the cult minions alone. But to my surprise, snowballs aren't considered an element in Castle Crashers, meaning we were doing normal damage to the cult minions. So bombs are an element, but snowballs aren't? But I wasn't about to question the logic, because this just saved me hours of headaches. Our first of the four bosses was the painter. For the painter boss fight, you have to destroy his paintings in order to get a small damage window on the painter himself. Himself. But luckily, we had leveled up defense quite a bit at this point, so we were able to tank the damage of the paintings. Which is great, because these paintings have quite a bit of health. I repeated this until I got the painter to about 40% of his health bar. This will start the second phase. The painter will come down and run around the arena, while spawning multiple paintings. But I simply just ran around the arena, avoiding the paintings and throwing snowballs at the painter when I could, until the painter finally died. Ew, is that fruit on Christmas? Next was the undead Cyclops, and just like the original fight, it was pretty easy. His casket swings can be blocked, meaning all he had to do was throw snowballs and block his attacks. And of course, PP Ground Strat. So after many PP Ground Strats, the Cyclops was defeated, and we could move on to the third boss. I made sure to restock my healing potions before going into this fight, and with five healing potions, I was ready. There are two waves of enemies we have to defeat before we can fight the next. Commander. For the first wave, I simply just ran around the arena throwing snowballs when I could. The first phase is pretty easy. The problem is the second phase, since there are now three beefies and even more enemies. However, I actually found that jumping in the air and throwing my snowballs were extremely effective. This allowed me to stay off the ground, preventing any damage from the enemies below. And with me being in the air, some of the enemies were struggling to hit me, meaning they'd try to throw a bomb and hit the other enemies instead. And of course, during all this, the brutes did pick me up and throw me a few times. But since I restocked my healing potions, I was able to heal from any damage. I eventually thinned down the enemies to only a few, meaning I could throw snowballs on the floor and be a bit more precise with who I wanted to damage. And on my first try, I defeated both waves of enemies. All I had to do was defeat the necromancer himself. Let's see how that goes. 
So since the Necromancer is a regular sized enemy, he will fall over from projectile magic. And if I was able to time it correctly, I could just throw another snowball the second he got up. Meaning the Necromancer spent the entire fight on the floor. So after a very successful Necromancer fight, I could finally move on to the final boss of the run. For the first phase, I could only damage one crystal at a time. So all I did was wait for the crystals to land and target one of them. Repeat for four crystals and I could move on to the second phase. For the second phase, the evil wizard will come down and have two different coloured bubbles. Blue meaning we could damage him with magic, red being melee. Of course, for this run, the blue bubble is the one that mattered. So I simply just waited for him to have a blue coloured bubble and threw my snowballs. For his third phase, he's floating in the air as a ball, meaning I use my magic jump to gain height and then spam my air projectiles. This allowed me to stay in the air and do damage with my snowballs. So I repeated this for the fourth and fifth phase which led me on to the final phase. For the sixth phase the necromancer will summon a sword and with this sword can do multiple attacks. With one of these attacks the evil wizard will jump in the air and summon meteors. For a very short amount of time he is completely stationary in the air meaning I could magic jump up and throw a snowball at him. Apart from that the evil wizard is pretty agile meaning it's quite hard to hit a snowball on the ground but if I am lucky I can get an odd hit or two. I defeat this until I finally defeated the evil wizard. I landed on the king's crystal, caught the final princess and rode it all the way back to the castle. So uh, one out of four princesses saved? But hey, at least Christmas was saved. So that was beating castle crashers using only snowballs, an extremely fun challenge. I'd just like to take a minute to thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. I am so proud of this community that we've built and I am so thankful for every single one of you guys. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this Christmas special. Have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Just happened.